Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be planting a hanging basket. We are going to plant the friend to this one. It's going to look exactly the same as this. I planted this one yesterday. Things haven't grown in yet. Uh, everything is a little bit wonky in its size. But uh, it'll fill in and it's going to be mostly purples, blues, and oranges. So I, uh, I really went crazy with color this year and plants. So uh, yeah, I'll show you the plants that are planted in here in just a second. Uh, I don't know that you're able to see in here, but I've used a water bottle that is, I'll show you just, here we go. I took a water bottle this year and I poked holes in it and I plunged this down the center of the pot because in the middle of the season when the roots develop in a hanging basket uh, and, and it dries out and it will dry out, they dry out really really quickly, uh, you'll find that when you water, the water just goes around the pot and just out. So this is a method to my madness. I saw this in a in a container gardening book. They didn't actually use a pop bottle, but I'm I'm upcycling. They use like uh, the white uh, the black uh, uh, drain tubing, and uh, I thought that this would work for a hanging basket size plant. You could also use like a two liter bottle uh, for a large container, uh, but this. You can water the plant and then you can add water to the bottle. I will take the lid off when I'm done. I just don't want to get soil in the top when we're planting. Uh, so yeah, you just fill that with water and then the water gets into the core of the plant where it really needs the water. So anyway, let's get to the plants that we're choosing. And this is a fun little additive uh, for, the, uh, for the pot this year. Okay, so this one here is a proven winner's. This is a Beth's Blue uh, Isotoma. I grew this uh, last year or two years ago in one of my pots. I had no idea what it was, uh, and the flowers were absolutely gorgeous. I loved it. Another one that we're going to plant in here is, uh, what is this one? Nemesia. Uh, some Sensatia, uh, blood orange. Really, really nice one. I was just going through picking things just because I like them. Uh, nature has a way of making everything kind of cohesive. The only thing that you really need to watch is how big things get. If you have something that grows really, really small mixed with something that grows really, really big, it's not going to give a nice effect. One's going to overpower the other and it'll just look like a mess. So just uh, be aware of that. If you're willing to do uh, heavy prunings, then uh, by all means try whatever you want. Uh, this one here is a Super Tunia. I actually thought it was a type of Calibricoa. I really love Calibricoas because they're self-cleaning. Uh, but these Super Tunias have a really, really small uh, flower and they are a Pedunia hybrid. But these ones say that they don't require deadheading. So we'll be the judge of this. I'm not going to deadhead them. I will prune, just like I prune these, but these aren't going to get any special care. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then the Calibricoa, this one here is uh, Holy Moly. And this uh, Super Tunia is uh, Violet uh, Star Charm. And then we've got Biddens. I'm used to seeing Biddens all in yellow, but this year they have uh, uh, painted red Bidden, and there's also one that's called Firecracker. Firecracker is a lot more orange and red. Uh, so that goes off to the side. Biddens get quite big. And then we have the Silver Falls. These are Dihondra. Dysandra? I don't know. Uh, we'll call them Silver Falls because it's easier to say. And these are just like hair that drape down. There's no real volume to them. They just uh, drape down the side of the pot. They get to be, I don't know, uh, six feet long if you let them. And then we've got here, this one here is Junkus. It's a type of uh, rush, I believe. And I love the spirally uh, crazy to the leaves. This one is called Twister. So that is, uh, these are actually uh, more of a, a aquatic plant, not really in the water, but uh, just off to the side where it likes wet soil. But I have seen people use these in containers and they do just fine. You just need to remember to water them regularly, and I do. So uh, that is really, really cool. This is going to be the center part of the pot. This is the thriller. These curls are fantastic. So enough about the plants. Let's get to the planting. <laughs> So I got these new hanging baskets this year. They are made of plastic. They don't say that they're UV resistant, but uh, fingers crossed that they are. I want to keep them for a few years. 
Again, they are just plastic, but they look like they've been weaved. Uh, they're really, really neat. There's some that look like they were knitted, like a sweater, and I thought that that was really fun. Uh, and they weren't very expensive. They have a nice drain hole. There is a plug that you could put in there if you wanted to not have the water escape out, but it's always best to allow for the, uh, the water to escape. I'm just going to go quickly grab a piece of uh, paper towel to fit over the hole so we don't get all kinds of soil down in there. And one thing that I did notice is there's no drainage hole in the bottom, so there is a reservoir that, that uh, seems to keep the uh, plants uh, moisturized. Between each thing there is a little hole, but in the center there's nothing. So I want to make sure that no soil gets stuck down in the bottom. So uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so we got our piece of paper down in the bottom. You can use coffee filters, you can use a piece of landscape fabric, you can use some stones if you want. It's just something to keep the uh, the gravel from, or sorry, the soil from, from clogging the hole down at the bottom. So what we're going to do, I've got some... Uh, all-purpose potting soil. This is a ProMix blend and I really enjoy ProMix and I buy the big bale and I just put it into uh, small containers like this uh, so I can use it easily. So much cheaper to buy the bales. So I'm just going to put maybe four or five inches of soil down into the bottom of the pot here. I don't want to fill it all the way up because we want to be able to stick our plants in there. All right, so that's enough for now. Then I'm going to add some, uh, this is uh, miracle Grow Slow Release Shake and Feed. This one is for Super Blooms. What is this one? 9189. So this is going to promote flowers, which that's what we want for uh, hanging baskets. Be generous with this. It's slow release, so it's not going to burn as much as if it was a liquid fertilizer if you added too much. But less is always more uh, in the, the case of myself because I do fertilize regularly anyway with a liquid fertilizer. So let's get this bottle, put it into place, make sure it's at the right depth. You want to make sure that it, uh, it is above the lip of the pot so that it doesn't get drowned out by, uh, by plant material and possibly soil. And we're just going to start uh, placing our plants here. I'm going to remove them all from their from their pots. We're just going to place them in. I want these these ones are going to grow really really strong. I want these to be on opposite sides of the pot. And when you plant them, you want to put them a little bit on an angle, uh, facing out towards the edge of the pot. That way, they're going to try to cascade over rather than growing straight up and and wide and crazy. Now we're going to do the silver falls. I want these to be on opposite sides of the pot. And we can squish, we'll have to squish these in. Uh, if I was to keep this longer than the five months that, uh, that my, uh, my growing season is, I would need to give these plants more space, more root space, because uh, this is going to be really close together. And uh, I've had some people ask me in the past, why am I planting them so close? It's to give uh, an instant show. Uh, our season is so short that you just want to you wanna see things get big and full. And uh, yeah, uh, planting things close together will, uh, will uh, stress out the plants, sure, if they're in there for a long enough time. But it will allow them to fill in and, and give you a nice painting of, of color. I don't really have a rhyme or reason to, uh, to how I'm planting these things, uh, but just around the outer edge, that's what we're doing. Now I've got one more plant left, and then the central plant. What I was trying to do is have like the blue and then the blue and then the pink and then the pink, and then, yeah, hopefully everything will be cohesive. As you can see, this orange is right across the street from this orange so it gives a full effect if I did all the orange on this side and all the purple on this side they wouldn't co-mingle it would just be a divide in the center so keep that in mind and here is our pot of water let me just move some of these around a little bit 
They're a little bit crowded to each other and there's a little bit extra space. And now we need this Juncus grass. Sometimes you can find this and it's called Unicorn. Maybe I need to make them a little tighter. So I can put this bottle right there so that this can fit in. There we go. So we got this all ready. Now we just need to fill in all the holes with some soil. There's not going to be a lot of holes to fill with soil. <laughs> um, but I probably will have to go in later on and add more soil. As I water this stuff in, the soil will uh, will settle and I'll probably need to, to go in and, and just add a little bit extra. That's no, no problem. I'd rather add a little extra than to have too much uh, from the get-go. I'd love to see what you're planting in your baskets this year. Uh, annuals are a fun thing to grow. They're constantly changing. Everybody has their own uh, ideas and uh, some of you are so creative. Well, many of you are so creative and uh, I just love to see what you're, uh, what you're thinking. So post those to either Instagram and tag me in there, Plants and Things, or go to the uh, Facebook uh, group, Plants and Things What's Growing, and uh, Share your photos there of, of how your uh, planters are looking. See, we've got the, uh, the bottle here. It's on a little bit of an angle, so when I water, in a few minutes I'll take the lid off. When I water, it's still visible. You can fill that up mid-season so my plants don't stay dry for too, too long. I thought it was a really useful idea. All right, how are we in the center here? I think we're good. I'll put a little bit of soil just for good measure right in here. There we go, I think we're done. I'm just going to clean up here and then we're going to uh, add some water to this. Okay, so we're gonna add water. We're gonna be nice and generous. You wanna try to uh, wash down any extra soil and you'll also find out whether you need to add some at this point because it will all find its cracks. I'm going to take the lid off of here. Are you able to see it in there? And then I'm going to change the, uh, the, uh, the hose so it's a little stream. I'm just going to fill into the bottle. So now it's going to water into the core. Are you able to see that? It'll water into the core and uh, it'll be fantastic. That's going to solve a lot of problems. <laughs> so anyway, uh, until next time, happy growing everyone. Also show me, remember to show me your photos of your hanging baskets and your garden. I'd love to see it. So again, happy growing everyone. I love that they've, they've packaged them in these, uh, these little fully sealed packages. Keeps in the humidity. Keeps in the freshness. Just move this off to the side for a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a little.